Today, I want to give you a tour of our home, but in sort of a different way. I plan to share with you where everything came from. The point of this video is that home decor takes time. So to have that relaxed, lived in look, which is what I've really come to love in my home. So in my previous home, I lean more into the minimalist aesthetic. So in the colors, in the amount of things I had on the walls and furniture pieces, which is totally okay. But what I found was that the issue with a aesthetic or with an aesthetic like that is that it needed to look perfect to look good. The other day my sister was at my house and she said, I love it how at your house it seems like it looks okay still when it's messy. And she didn't know it because she's not a huge like home decor fan, but that was a major compliment to me because that is something that I've noticed about houses and I wasn't exactly sure how to achieve that same lived in look that even whenever there's a blanket thrown here or there or there's toys on the floor, it still looks put together. It's like part of the style. So hopefully you understand what I'm saying. I'm gonna first insert here just a clip of our porch. It has skates and boots and towels from the pool all over it right now and so i'll just do one from a few weeks ago whenever it was actually ready and then the inside of the house i had about 30 minutes to quickly tidy it up i want to get this video shot before lunch and so this is going to be sort of a real home tour like a not styled this was pulled together very quickly and share with you where everything came from first of all i want to whisper when i come in because Theodore's asleep in my room and I will show you that whenever he wakes up. Okay, so first let's go in the kitchen and talk a little bit about where things came from in here to get the collected look. Keep in mind, there are a lot of things that I still want. There's things that I'm still on the hunt for, whether it be on Facebook Marketplace, antique shops. I am a constant collector and I like to edit and pare down whenever things don't work out. But okay, first of all in here, have my plate gallery wall. These can be found very easily and very inexpensive at antique shops, Facebook Marketplace. You can put in the search terms Flow Blue China and around here, at least in Missouri, they are super cheap. So these have been knocked off before. I have a whole bunch in the basement to replace them. So, you know, a couple dollar mistake if that happens. I don't remember where I found this picture, but I know it came from an antique shop. Just based on looking at it, I would say in Missouri here, that probably cost around $20. I know I found this light at an antique shop, I th think around $100 possibly. We found this table at an antique shop and I believe it was around $200. It came with the chairs and then a few uh, mismatched chairs back there because it only came with four. And then between here and then now we're kind of spreading out into the island, um, our whole family can fit for eating here in the kitchen. Now this was a really good find. I looked for a long time, but I actually ended up finding it relatively quickly based on like the specifics. I needed a very specific size table for this space because it's an eat-in kitchen. We don't really have that much space, but it needed to be pretty much as long as possible to fit our family. I love that it's a little bit rough in texture. It's just something that's getting beat up and um, continues to, and that's okay. Okay, the island here, this we actually had built the same cabinet maker that made our cabinets and made these cabinets here. Built this, and then we got quartz countertop on top. This is something I really wanted a lot of space because as you know, YouTube and blogging is my business. And so having a nice white surface here close to a window, which is right here, is really important for photography. All of my food photography happens right here on this corner, and then it also gives us plenty of space to work with. Now in our kitchen, I also wanted kind of an unfitted kitchen look. And so that is why instead of putting more cabinetry here, I found this hutch. So this was, I believe, around $300. Uh, it's been a while, like a couple years at least. And then I also found an, a vintage picnic basket to go on top of that. We found this on Facebook Marketplace. This, I believe, was around $100, but I think we have about 1,000 in it after all of the restoration, but. For me, I needed something that wasn't just very standard looking because most of my content is made right here in front of the stove and 
it really helps for photos and obviously also I just love having vintage pieces but it, it helps to have something that's a little bit unique looking I get asked about it a lot and um, if you are interested in something like that check Facebook marketplace people a lot of times think that these are just throwaways but they can be restored now the shelf here I found at an antique shop for about $20. I painted it. The sink, which is currently full of dishes, I found at a restoration shop. I get asked a lot of questions about the sink and the functionality of it. I will say that there are a few disadvantages. It's very shallow. It has a small drain, so you have to put like a little basket thing in to catch any extra food that might have fallen off the plate that you have to empty pretty constantly because it can't accommodate a disposal so we actually before we renovated our kitchen it did have a disposal we got rid of it but I still would prefer this sink even given those things so I do put a lot of value on form but also where form and function can marry is good this sink does serve us really well it works great you don't really want to overfill it with dishes because it's kind of shallow but the drain board really accommodates a lot of drying dishes it works perfect this I forgot to take the tag off. I just found this a few days ago actually for a dollar and I always collect baskets because whenever you get just regular things at the grocery store or from your farm or whatever, having them in little pretty things like this, like taking them out of the plastic and putting them in something like this, instantly gives that look where your house looks clean even when things are out. Or not really clean, but it still looks pretty when things are out. Same goes for this bowl here. I don't remember where I found it anymore. It was probably on an antique haul at some point. Probably less than $20. It has a crack in it, so I use it again for storage. Currently, it is being used for eggs. You will find in my kitchen and in my entire house a mixture of old and new. I like to marry them together for function and then also just to make things really pretty. So over here in the pantry area, I have a antique frame that I've added a Miss Mustard Seed print and then some more blue china. I have herbs drying. I like stuff out. I like the eggs out, the apples out, the copper pots hanging exposed, uh, the herbs exposed, various flowers and baked goods. All exposed gives me that country look that I like so much. So let's see here, as far as finding things, I found some of these copper pots on Etsy. I have found them at antique shops. They're really just a mixture. I found this on Etsy. I will leave links below to videos where I've done, like I've done an entire pantry redo. So if you wanna know like specifically where everything came from, you can check out that video. The oil painting, I'm always on the lookout for a good oil painting, came from an antique fair. And then we have a few decorative things like this old coffee grinder. I think Luke actually found that Somewhere for free, but I don't remember where. If we go out of power again like we did um, about a year and a half ago, we lost power for three days. Having that will be really nice so we don't have to uh, go get coffee. Okay, here in the sunroom, this is a new find. I got this from VMAT Floor. It's a vinyl floor mat that looks like a rug, so really good for the mud room so that it can get really dirty. Then just have some cabinets in here. I don't know if I've showed this room in a while and it's just right off the kitchen. Okay, I forgot to talk about this rug. It needs to be power washed really bad right now and it, that actually works really great, but we haven't done it in probably a year. I found this from Turkish Rug Kingdom online and although it looks messy, I really like how it looks in the context of our kitchen. Oh, I forgot to talk about the other light fixtures. I have two sconces here and then these pendants here. I believe they were either found on Etsy or Rejuvenation. So those were a bit pricier. Some of the things in here were total bargains. Some of the things were splurges. It just depends on how readily available. Certain things are very easy to find and certain things whenever they're in mint condition and you're looking for something old, which I really wanted to keep with the style of our house. So having period appropriate light fixtures was going to be a must and also difficult to find. You'll notice throughout my house a lot of little ironstone pieces such as this. This one actually came from a friend. Just put the word out there. I had a friend who was getting rid of this and she said, do you want it? And I said, yes, of course. I'll find a place for it. And I believe my aunt purchased this for me for uh, Christmas. Again, the word was out. 
People know I like ironstone. That makes for an easy thing for somebody to go look for you. There's some ironstone up there as well. I love sprinkling these in amongst like practical things for a farmhouse collected look. And then I also have a little match holder that I haven't hung up yet, but I do actually light the stove with matches. I believe I've showed you most of the kitchen. So let's move on to, I'll skip over a few rooms because I don't want to talk about right here by Theo. So we'll head over to the bathroom and I'll probably do the rest of the downstairs shortly. Here in the bathroom, I have a few things that I've collected to show you. One is um, these two frames. They look like they really go together, but they actually came from different sources. I'm always looking for gold frames. I like little details when I'm looking. I like to find things like that. I like odd shapes. Now these are both pretty standard shapes, but if you can find something that is larger than average or maybe more rectangular or oval, I find that that adds a lot of interest. I also just stacked these two and they are both filled with prints. Here on the floor, this looks like a vintage rug, but it actually, I think, my mother-in-law got it for me for Christmas. I think it might just be from like JCPenney or something. And then the tub came from the cottage on this property that we had to actually tear down. So we painted that. Another tip, especially if you're trying to be thrifty, which who isn't, is to any way that you can restore something, whether it be with paint, which works all kinds of miracles, sewing, I'll show you more examples of that in here. That is a good way to add color and give something a refresh. So this is another example of a frame that has an odd shape. This is just a print. It kind of looks like an oil, but it's not. It's, it's just a print. So in order to have this size work for just this random frame that I found at a thrift shop, I measured the inside of this frame and then I went into canva.com and used custom dimensions and just put in those inches, drug in a print and then just cropped where I needed to and drug it to size, sent that to my local print shop, and then now I have this art here in our bathroom. This I found on Facebook Marketplace. It came with the top. I had it cut so that we could put in a sink. Though the piece itself was very inexpensive, there's a little bit of money in this project at this point because I had to have the marble custom cut. The mirror came from another piece. I believe it's in the cottage. So I've just pieced these things together, trying to keep with sort of the same time period. And then these sconces here I found on Etsy. Unfortunately, he no longer sells them. But they have a vintage vibe to them, even though they're new. So if you can find a reproduction that has a vintage look or an antique look, you're going to be spending a lot less money than getting the real deal. And I try to do that when, when I can. And then here's another piece of ironstone. Again, just scattering those throughout to add little special moments okay coming out of the bathroom we'll talk about this in a little bit this was a really good bargain so this is a hutch obviously that we keep all of our sewing stuff in and our craft stuff this is like where all the craft stuff is contained all right i will show you the living room momentarily here is another gold frame that i found I, again, don't, sorry, remember where I found it. It does not have glass. Most of the old frames I have that didn't have glass originally before purchasing them, I could have glass custom made, but I still have it. Pretty much if it didn't come with glass, it's still sitting here without glass, which I've already showed you three frames where that's the case. The images have been in them, the prints, for at least a year or two now on all of them, and they're still fine. So if you find one without glass, don't worry you can totally just go without glass. You might have to replace the print at some point, but it's really been fine. At the top of the steps, here's some more art. Whenever my friends came in town, uh, my blogging friends, they were asking me, where do you get all your art? I feel like this is something I'm brand new at and trying to like explore and figure out. And I've definitely bought pieces that later on, I'm like, yeah, that wasn't something I like. But for the most part, it's been a positive experience. If it's a real oil painting and you can get it for a bargain, which a lot of times you can at thrift shops and on Facebook Marketplace, not at antique shops, um, you're going to want to purchase it. If it's a real oil painting, usually it's something nice. I don't remember the exact cost. I want to say under 300, but it's massive. I don't know how big, but it's really, really big. And so it's a statement piece and 
I, I don't know, I feel like most places if this wasn't purchased on Facebook Marketplace would have been thousands of dollars. So it's a real oil painting, it's a little scene with like a mom and her two boys, which I love because I have a bunch of little boys and so I knew it would be a winner in here. And I actually really want to put wallpaper up these steps and so I will be doing that eventually. And I think that wallpaper behind this beautiful piece would really make it pop even more. So my tip for that is just keep your eyes out for real deal oil paintings. Sometimes you can find them for a bargain and pick them up if you can. For my collections in this room, you can see I have mismatched quilts. I'm okay with that. I like this look where not everything's perfect and matchy because things aren't going to be perfect here in my home with seven kids. The beds I found for a complete steal. I believe they were $20 for the pair. I think they are from the 19th century. They were rope beds, we converted them. But we keep these rooms up here really minimal. People ask me, where are you hiding everything? I'm really, truly not. The kids have a lot of crafting going on. My son who loves to sew has fabric just shoved in here, which is, which is okay, because that is his primary toy. He likes to sew, so this is his quilt he's working on. <laughs> I love it. But for the most part, during the day, our kids are outside. And so this just can stay really minimal. They have Bible CDs and things like that. They love GT and the Halo Express and they love Adventures and Odyssey Club. And so they have CDs and they have their CD player and then a sewing machine and fabric. I have another Turkish rug from Turkish Rug Kingdom here layered over a jute rug. Very minimal in this room so we can try to keep it clean without going crazy. In the other boys room, similar stuff. Quilts, I would say vintage beds, but I actually think these, these were handmade beds. I found them on Facebook Marketplace, but they are not antique. They just have a antique vibe. And then a vintage rug I found on Facebook Marketplace. Very inexpensive. I've gotten different responses when I say the price of a vintage rug. Some people say, wow, that's a bargain, and some people say, I would never spend that. So I believe I got this one, if I'm remembering correctly, and some of you may remember from an antique haul, but I believe I got this one for around $300. It is wool, it is thick, it's heavy, it's one of those pieces that will be here forever. I believe it's a Karastan. So that to me is a complete bargain, but if you're comparing it to like a manufactured like Rugs USA or whatever, that is expensive. So it just depends on like what you're comparing it to. And then baskets, I pick up baskets that have lids and straps, which this one's broken, but that's okay. Anywhere I can find them. We have them all over this house. They have blocks and toys, so there are toys in these. These little boys in this room love blocks, and so we have lots of blocks. We have a very messy bookshelf and a couch to read on. This is a vintage, or antique, actually you'd call this antique, dresser, and that's pretty much it. Okay, in the bathroom here, again, I try to find rugs. Every time I go to an antique shop, when I'm looking on Facebook Marketplace, I look for rugs that are thick, they have weight to them, you can see the pattern on the back, so you know it's woven. I like it if it's wool. If it has fringe, I'm almost always sold. I love fringe. I believe this one was around $20, which is a complete steal. If I saw this rug anywhere else for $20, I'd probably buy it like 10 times over and just put it all over our house, but that's the only time I've ever found one for $20. These bowls are antique, and we had them plumbed. Um, I have a blog post on how you can get the whole in the antique sink, so that will be on farmhousehomeboon.com if you're interested. These two medicine cabinets were also collected, and they are not the same, but they're similar enough that paint really unified them. And then here's just some new sconces. These are not an example of good antique lighting. Those are just new, but I think that they work well with the rest of this bathroom. One more thing I forgot to show you in here is a DIY that I need to actually, I probably need to wash this top very much. Yes, I need to bleach this badly. But here's an old ugly bench that I made a really easy slip cover for, and it really goes well with this table. It worked better when it was a girl's room, but still it's functional, and I think that it's very pretty. 
You can do that with almost any bench. I have one downstairs I'll show you shortly. Here is another dresser that I found at a local shop. I believe it was around $300. I really, really love it because I like this pine color. For me with furniture these days, it needs to not need any help. I don't wanna have to paint it or strip it. I'm willing to pay a little bit more for something like that. And so that is why I went for this piece. I already liked the color. I love when it has one of these old mirrors attached to it. Another great vintage rug find is this one. I believe I paid $90 for this years ago. Again, you can just tell the quality when you look at the back and the vibrant colors. We've had this for years. It's had so much wear and I still love it. It has fringe, which means that I'm going to always want to purchase it. I forgot to mention this piece. This came from Facebook Marketplace. I don't know if I remember the price anymore, but it's a nice little desk. And again, it has a lot of those old details that make it really special. A few more beds that I found very inexpensive. I believe both of these metal beds in this room were $20. They don't match, but we've painted them to coordinate and they're both really solid and nice. Here is a chair I found, I don't remember where anymore, I think <laughs> an antique shop probably. I liked the caning, but I liked that they put wood behind it because kids like to destroy caning. I liked the color, the shape, and then we just paired it with this old secretary that we painted with chalk paint. So just keep in mind, stuff does not have to match. It can coordinate, and then also you'll find once you start building collections, that you'll be shopping your house. So I'm constantly moving things around. Something that once lived in the living room will then live up in the boys' room and then it'll end up in the, the cottage. It goes all over the place because sometimes you're shopping and you think something's gonna go one place and it actually, once you've maybe collected something else in the future, would look better together with something else. So a lot of times you can't predict what all you're gonna find and then you find it a better place based on that new item. All right, Theo's still sleeping, but we're gonna start talking about the entryway. So this is the entryway. We did add a wood stove and there's a lot more space here to walk than people think. So it still, you know, you can get through pretty easily. It's a very basic room. This is something that's a collection. This was found at an antique shop. Mary Jo from Briarton Farm purchased it for her house, but it ended up being too large scale for her fireplace, so she gave it to me, and we actually use those lovely fireplace tools. This light fixture I found on eBay. Actually, I take that back. My friend Paige from Farmhouse Vernacular, she found this for me on eBay. She's found a few things for me in this house, and that's always perfect. So whenever she does, I usually am just like, okay, you took all of the shopping work out of it and I buy it. So the same goes for the rug I'm about to show you in our bedroom. But yeah, she found that and then a local like, electrician rewired it for me because it was not wired properly. But I love how it looks in our entryway and I love that it's literally from the 1800s, like our house. Now this room is one of the rooms that I want to wallpaper. So whenever my friend Sarah from She Holds Dearly came to my house, you can hear Theo's noisemaker, sorry about that. I was asking her what color she thought would highlight this gorgeous staircase because it's so beautiful the way that it curves. And I feel like the colors I've chosen at the moment are just very underwhelming for it. And she said wallpaper. And ever since she said that, I picture this whole thing being wallpaper, which I'm hesitating because there's like a million options for wallpaper colors and patterns and the install is gonna be very annoying. So we're gonna get there, but I want to wallpaper this room here, so the entryway room, and then the stairwell, both of them. So they need to be coordinating, but yet not competing and not the same. So these were this is something that we're gonna be doing sometime in the future. For the living room, this piece was here when we purchased the house. He offered it to us for sale and we decided to purchase it. This was a dining room. So this was filled with china. Now it's filled with books and then topped with more ironstone. If I find a good deal on ironstone, I will never pass it up because there's always somewhere to put it. I have so many more places 
where ironstone would look really lovely. And so there's really never enough. I mean, I'm sure at some point there could be, but so far that has not happened. Art in this room, these are both prints. Again, I like the oblong, odd, not standard five by seven, eight by 10 shapes to give interest. I like layering them. This little piece, I think I found for $80 on Facebook Marketplace. I'm always looking on Facebook Marketplace. Another piece of ironstone. I actually found that on Facebook Marketplace, but not locally, and so this was mailed to me. It was a set with the bowl upstairs in the boys' bathroom. And so then I just used it here for flowers. This was a thrift shop find. These two wing chairs are very ugly underneath, but I slip covered them. So that's a really good way to add value is by making something custom like a slip cover. I have a tutorial here on my YouTube channel where I slip covered one of these from start to finish right before you. And so I shared the whole entire process. We've had these for five or six years now, I think and they're still holding up great. I have to bleach them every once in a while, but they still look really nice. I believe I found these at an online auction, and there's a matching pair on this side. I found this really recently, I shared with you in a thrift shop haul, I believe it was $60 and it has marble on top. So it kind of coordinates with the other one over here. I could just go on and on. I've collected things in this home from so many places. I thought I'll just like sum it all up, but really, this is just years of me collecting, even things from my old house, things from here on Facebook Marketplace, thrift shopping, antique shopping. I'm always looking in order to make this place more cozy and put together. This rug Luke and I found in Arkansas last year, we went on a trip, just the two of us before I had the baby, and I believe it was like $20 at a thrift shop. Look at the pattern. It wasn't the right size, so I just layered it over a sisal or jute rug. Again, look at the back, test the quality. You can see that it has fringe. I love the colors. Something with a pattern like this is easier to keep clean. Whenever you get it dirty, it kind of just blends in. And so that's why these work so well in our home full of so many children. Some of you may remember last, no, not last year, two years ago, three years ago, I painted a love seat and a chair with chalk paint, still going strong still living in our living room. It is not crunchy. It's more like a dye because you water it down. And I still just love the way it looks with the other pieces in this room. We have some redone, we have some new, we have some vintage with paint and dye. So much going on in this room, but the colors I feel like really go together. All right, Theo's awake, so we'll show you the bedroom here we have these pocket doors they don't meet up in the middle and we actually are going to be working on fixing those today we'll see how that goes one of my favorite finds in my whole house is this rug Paige from farmhouse vernacular found this for me on ebay it's huge when i first got it i thought maybe it was too big but the more i live with it the more i love it it makes the space cozy it adds lots of color and pattern. It's antique or vintage. It just has the kind of vibe that really suits my Victorian house very well. We found this bed on Facebook Marketplace. I believe it was around $100, $200 at the most. This I painted whenever I painted the other chair, the love seat over here in the living room, holding up well. This is where I oftentimes sit with my feet up and nurse Theodore. This stool here has a little secret to it. Just was a cheap thrift shop, ugly little piece. And many years ago, I just created this very simple little slip cover. It was just one piece that I tucked on all four sides and added a little tie and then added a ruffle. So it's very basic, but it's just the right touch to make this fit in with the vibe of this room here. These are more of a splurge, I guess you could say. I got them from Pottery Barn. I just wanted something that matched and I wanted it quick. With anything in home decor, you can pull your whole house together on a shoestring budget, but a lot of times you have to wait for it. So sometimes there's times when you really need something like functional that you might splurge on and this would be that case. These nightstands, they match on both sides. I actually found these on Facebook Marketplace for I believe around $20 many years ago. I mean, I wanna say at least seven years ago. Painted them, added the baskets, added this brass hardware. I think I got that from House of Antique Hardware. 
See, it matches completely on this side. Sometimes I think about getting something else, but really, they're just perfect. I think they're like 80s nightstands, to be honest with you. But with the paint, the baskets, and the hardware, I think they fit in really great. And I really like that they're very functional. I have stuff in the basket. Over here, I have my baby wraps for Theo. Here's an example of a thrift shop frame that I really like because it's odd shaped. It's chippy, it's nice. I just added a photo of our family. I like the little details here on top. We have our armoire, this is our closet. It was a Facebook Marketplace find. It doesn't close all the way, so that's a tip. If you are looking for armoires, my number one tip is make sure they close because if they don't close, it's just so hard to figure out how to make them close. Um, I'm sure there's something we could do, but we haven't, <laughs> and so that's a little bit annoying. This piece I picked up just a few days ago at the same thrift shop that I purchased that little basket in the kitchen. It's just a little fireplace tool. It was $22. The shop that I go to, it's pretty near me. Had to have that for this faux fireplace area. Now along those lines, collected this from Facebook Marketplace, this from a local salvage shop. This trunk at the end of the bed is perfect for storing sheets. And it's very chippy, but I like the character that it adds here. This was something I found at a garage sale probably seven or eight years ago. I painted it with Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint and Shutter Gray. Never touched it up. It has done well all this time. It has some chipping, but that was my original goal. And who knew how much I'd love blue in this room whenever I bought it for our other house so many years ago. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this tour of our collected home. Lots of these rooms have reveals at some point that I shared, and so I'll share like the bathroom makeover reveal where you can see the befores and the afters and the pantry and the guest bathroom and all of the different renovations and makeovers that I've shared along the way. I did the kitchen renovation, I did a dining room, so I'll put those below in case you're looking for specific sources, but my encouragement and tips for you are just to look all the time. Put some search parameters into Facebook Marketplace. Go to the antique shops, go to the thrift shops, start diving in, looking, and that's how you will find these amazing finds. I get a lot of people who are like, how do you find so much stuff? And most of the time I don't. I just look so often that it really builds up and accumulates over time. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new, hit the subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and our handmade home. Thank you for stopping by our farmhouse.